you know that winter is now over and spring has officially begun as of Saturday. The weather begins to warm. We see the daffodils start to pop up and almost ready to bloom, at least here at the rectory. I've seen them blooming already in the area as been walking or driving around. And the grape hyacinths are coming up. The hyacinths are coming up. Oh my goodness, it's such a great joy to witness the beginnings of spring. We also probably know and see the signs of spring coming by our hands. You know, I don't know about you, but for me, every time in winter, because of the constant washing of hands and uh, because of the cold weather, and now because of COVID, because we've been sanitizing our hands uh, with the alcohol-based sanitizing hand sanitizer, it really just destroys your, your skin. Um, but with the warming weather, your skin is helped and, well, I don't know about yours again, but you know, mine tends tend to crack all over the place. You know, certainly I use lotion and the like. Well, the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, I look at my quote unquote wounds in my hand and it recalls to me what St. Peter writes in his first letter. This is what he writes. Jesus himself bore our sins on his body. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. By his wounds, you have been healed. I look at you know my little simple wounds, just a mere inconvenience. Christ's wounds piercing his hands, his feet, and ultimately his side. Those wounds, Jesus still bears in his risen, glorified body. Every person who has been graced to see him appear to them after his resurrection has seen his wounds. All of our suffering, the minor suffering of sliced or cut hands because of the cold weather, to the major suffering of the individual who is dying from cancer, to the suffering of a daily annoyance, to the suffering of someone who's going through immense heartbreak or loss. All of that, Christ took on himself on the cross, redeemed that suffering, and through all of his wounds, you and I, we are healed. Sounds strange, doesn't it? To be healed by a wound. We always think that healing would be like what I'm looking very forward to soon. Um, a scabless, scarless, less wounded hand. But it's Jesus' wounds that heal. What happens when Thomas doubting that Jesus is risen from the dead, sees our Lord and Savior, who says to him, place your hand in my side and place your finger in my hands. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas exclaims to him with great joy and awe and wonder, my Lord and my God. Yes, my dear friends of Christ, these wounds eventually and soon will heal. Jesus, though, chooses not to have his wounds healed because it's by his wounds that you and I are healed. In gratitude to Christ, my dear friends of Christ, for healing us by his wounds, let us, you and me, seek to help others and relieve them in their pain and their suffering by introducing them to Christ who heals us by his wounds. And my friends of Christ, we can do that by making space for grace.